Have you ever wanted to get fisted hard? I mean, uh, hello everyone, I'm James, and welcome to today's Diablo video. So before I, I get, uh, before I, you guys get angry, uh, considering any of you actually care, which I'm sure none of you do, uh, I, I did change my build around a little bit. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Oh no, I'm actually gonna talk about that right now. Uh, the reason, reason things are a bit different for you, you experienced Diablo players, you probably know what's going on right here. Uh, I changed things around because I've been using this wave of light build to farm for days, and I'm sick of it. Okay, technically I'm not really sick of the build, it's fun. I'm just sick of farming. The same, it's, it's, it's gotten, it's gotten annoying. Uh, mainly because I've been, I've been farming so much because I haven't been able to get the gear that I need. I haven't been able to get either Unity or the, uh, or the Traveler's Pledge for the, uh, Uliana's set. Or this set, actually. I'm using different stuff, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But I, I had most of the pieces for this, so I was like, okay, I'll try that, see how that works. And it's actually a bit more interesting than I actually, than I gave it credit for, so I, I want to talk about that for a little while. Uh, the, the good things that came from my my farming farming experience is that now I, I now have a very easy way to get death's breath, so that's not too much of an issue. But I I don't want to jinx myself, and I also have more gold than I will ever use ever. Uh, my main problem is through all of my cubing, I have run out of some of the more basic materials, so I just have a lot of death's breath and. Forgotten one, a lot of Death's Breath, that's not actually that much. I have a bunch of Death's Breath, and I have a lot of Forgotten Souls, but not a lot of the base stuff, so that's a problem. And I also have more Greater Rift Keystone than I'll probably ever ever use, also, which is alright, I guess. And I've gotten more gems and all that other garbage, so that's good. So today, I am going to start using the, what do I call it, like the Generator Raiment Monk build set thing. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. The thing that's at the top of leaderboards that I claimed was boring as hell before I even started using it. I'm gonna use that. Um, I'm probably gonna call it something different like eight eight times, at least eight times in this video like I always end up doing, because I'm terrible at that. And before I start anything major, um, if any of you want to see something that's a bit more in-depth on the build that's, that's like kind of guide-ish, but not something nearly that intricate, probably, because I'm a terrible, lazy person and a bad editor. <coughs> uh, I can do that if anyone's interested, so just, just I don't know, comment, I guess, if you, if you, if you want to, if you want to see something, uh, a more in-depth version of, of what, I'm, what I'm basically going to show off, because I'm probably not going to explain things too much, like anything that I see interesting I'll probably bring up, but not in terribly great amounts of detail, because I, I don't really feel like doing that in this video. So on top of that, uh, let me talk about my gear a little bit. So, main difference between this build right here that I'm using and the top ones is my jewelry. I'm using Focus on Restraint for my rings and Hellfire Amulet for my amulet because I don't have the Traveler's Pledge, which is the amulet for the Endless Walk set, which is the ring and amulet two-piece two set. So I can't use that. And I haven't been able to find Unity, so I can't use that. So I just improvised. I had Ancient Legendary Focus and Restraint, so I was like, no, fuck it, I might as well just do that. And that's what I did. So obviously I'm not following exactly what like the top people are doing, which if they're not using the same items I am, there's probably a reason for it. I could already tell that there are some performance issues with, with this build at the moment, but that might not necessarily be might ne not necessarily be the build's fault. Anyway, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to do something interesting at the same time. So, speaking of Hellfire Amulets, I wanted to I, I wanted to show how to get one because I thought that process was pretty cool, or I mean a bit cooler than just doing riffs. It doesn't require bounties or anything. It's a little bit different. So as I'm playing this, I'm going to explain that along the way. So the way to get a Hellfire amulet or ring, if you really want one, although I <laughs> really wouldn't suggest that at this point. Um, y there are enemies in the world that you well, an axe one, two, three, and four that you have to kill called Key Wardens. And what they do is they drop little items called Infernal Machines that will, like, when used in a certain area, bring you to a world, a little zone, that's basically like a boss arena. And you fight some bosses that are uh, sort of more powerful versions of, of bosses that you, you 
you fought in like an Astoria and stuff already. And they drop materials that let you make a Hellfire amulet. So that process is kind of long and annoying. So I'm going to cut out most of the uh, traveling and just find the enemies. And then we'll go after that to the boss fights. But I, I was just thinking, I will take some time to explain my, my issues with, the, with this build so far. It is really fun and very fast, which is nice. Um, a lot more fun than I, than I thought it would be. Uh, it kind of has some mechanic type stuff to it. Well, not kind of. It does have mechanics to it too, which... I know, I give, I give a lot of crap. I'm happy that I'm playing it and that it's actually not terrible. So, you know, that's always good. So here's the here's the Key Warden. I, I don't really want to... I actually may have already talked about Odeg uh, and how much I, I, I hate him. So I'm just going to murder him right now and get this over with because I don't want to have to deal with him anymore. So Key Warden of Act 1 located in the Fields of Misery. If you go on your map, you can, well, it's kind of grayed out now when we go in Act 2. Uh, you can see a little key next to your little zone. It actually just tells you the key word and their name and that they're there. That's what that means. So if you're ever looking for a key word and don't fret, don't you need to go online. You can just look right on your map. Something I actually did before I got Reaper of Souls was, well, I actually I knew I was getting it for my birthday like a couple years ago. So before I got it, like it was like a like a few days before my birthday. I spent like all of my time trying to get a Hellfire ring just because I hadn't gotten one before and I really wanted to know what it did and see it like firsthand. Uh, it's it's not good. <laughs> Let me just tell you that right now. It's not that good. Uh, not viable at all. It's it's it was fun to have, but not not good to any any means whatsoever. So there's that. Uh, and yeah, so I, I fought all the key wardens a bunch of times. Well, not a bunch of times. I just I fought them on my like really shitty level 60 wizard, and I fought the uber bosses, and I had a good time. So before I get caught up in conversation again, something that you may have noticed is that purple arrow right there. That's a feature that was added at some point. I don't really remember when. It just shows you where the key warden is when you go close enough, so you don't have to like run all the way around the the zone to uh, try and find them, which is really nice. And is that keyword of Act 2, what is his name, Sokar, is defeated. So another thing about this build that I'm not necessarily concerned about, because I think I know why it's happening, uh, basically is that i having issues with my survivability when I face like a lot of enemies at once, which is understandable, I guess. I don't quite have, I don't have Unity, and I don't have the Traveler's Pledge stuff, or sorry, the Endless Walk stuff. So, I, I don't have the extra survivability from that. So that's probably why I'm not performing as well as I could be. If I had like, 100% more toughness, I'd, I'd probably be doing much better. Other than that though, there aren't too many issues that I actually really have with this build. It's, it's pretty fun and, and interesting. Um, there are probably mechanics that I'm not like utilizing to their, their fullest potential with any build, but I'm not like... I don't really care, so it's 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 all good for me. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty casual, if you will, pretty casual, and I don't mind taking things kind of at a chill pace. It's just how I operate. Here's the key warden, back at it again, and the wreath is defeated. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, on higher torment levels, you're going to have a chance to get more than one Infernal Machine when you're uh, killing a Key Warden. Just thinking about it now, I think out of all the Key Wardens, this guy might have my... the one with my, the, my favorite name. It, I know it's Neckerat, Neckerat, but I just like thinking of it as just Neckrat. I'm going to call him Neckrat from now on. Okay, so after you get all of your Infernal Machines, Make your way to Act 1, New Tristram, that's the home area, and there'll be this little house that I already kind of, I kind of ruined it. You have to bust down the door, and you can go into this place called the Heretic's Abode, and in here, you can use your Infernal Machines and get the portals to fight the Uber Bosses. So I'm almost certain that I will not survive this on T10 of my kind of limited survivability, but we'll see how it goes. 
Yeah, I'm not really doing that much, all that much damage either, which kind of sucks. Um, I don't know. Okay, I killed one of them. Come on. This isn't too bad. Oh yeah, look, I did it. Hell yeah. And I think on higher torment levels, you have a better chance of getting more materials too. So that's pretty useful. Okay, next round, round of putridness, let's do it. That's what they called me in high school. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is gonna go nearly as well. I don't know who to kill first, this doesn't matter. This is going much better than I thought it would on T10. I know I'm getting a lot of regen from my uh, one of my gems, one of my legendary gems, so that's pretty useful. That's, that's probably why I didn't die standing in his poison. So I opened the fourth world accident, but that's fine. So Roma Terror, as I, I believe it's, yeah, okay. Um, this might be a pain if I'm not careful. Which honestly, what? Or you know, I could just. I I wish I understood these. I must not understand the mechanics of this build good, like well enough because that just happens out of nowhere where I just I just burst down the enemy super quickly and I don't quite understand how that how that works. I don't know, whatever. Okay, now final um final Uber boss room is basically the Diablo fight with a little bit of a twist in that when you get him low enough, he'll spawn another Uber boss to aid him, which is, oh god, really annoying. And something I discovered a while ago is that killing Diablo doesn't necessarily mean that the fight ends, you just, you have to kill any and all the Uber bosses that he spawns in order to win. And that's, that's, that's it, that's just how you win, you gotta kill the Uber bosses. The little tiny message that's not granted all this—it says darkness recedes, and you get all your stuff. I got an achievement too that I I, you know, I want to look at. So what's that for? Didn't I get an achievement? Oh, maybe that was for the season journey. Actually, that's probably what that was for. We'll do that some other time. Oh yeah, another thing. Uh, I guess uh, my explanation for where to where to go isn't it wasn't really necessary because it just says it right on the item. But I guess if you didn't know what the Tainted Abode was, you would have had to look it up, so I'm glad I'm here. Another thing I should have mentioned is, um, to make the Hellfire Amulet, you have to actually go to Act 2. I'll just go there and show show how to get it. It's just a recipe you need to buy from someone. So you go to Squirt the Peddler, and you buy a book, one of these designs. Uh, get the Hellfire Amulet for 5 million gold. You'll notice there are two Hellfire Rings. One is for level 60, one is for level 70, because I guess there was one before... Um, there was one before the expansion came out. So that's just what that is. If you really want one, buy the 5 million gold one, because that's the one for max level. Unless, you're level. unless you don't have Reaper of Souls and can only get the 60, in which case you can just buy the 2 million one. Like, getting gold isn't all that difficult anyway. Like, just look. But, yeah, I guess if you're starting out, it's, it can be hard, so do, do what you feel like. So after you buy the recipe and teach it to the jeweler, you will see an orange Hellfire Amulets of Dex and, and Strength. Obviously buy the one that, or make the one that is for your, like, primary attribute. <laughs> Otherwise, why did you be able to get in the first place? And what this does, which I may have already explained, I don't remember, is it gives you a fifth passive when you put it on. Now, a little fun, funny story. When I first started playing, uh, one of my friends told me about it, and I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. You must need to build that in everyone. And it was like, I think at the time they were really useful, but slowly I don't, I don't know if they're as useful anymore. Slowly I think they've been fifth out of it. Uh, but what I thought it did was it gave you a fifth like slot right here to put a passive into like you just used it and it gave you a fifth slot or something I it didn't it didn't click until like it was either explained to me further or I figured it out for myself that you actually had to use an item slot to get the fifth passive 
And you can get passives that you already have equipped, so like it, it just gives you a random one out of all the ones that you have in here, so you kind of have to get lucky if you need one for, for a build. So anyway, I'll just make, I'll make two more of these, and we'll see what passives I get. Okay, so, need two more. I got another Ancient One, uh, Relentless Assault, and Beacon of Guitar. Okay, so, what are those? Okay, so Relentless Assault, let's see what that one does. That one, you're dan you're due dan 20 or more dance enemies that are blind, frozen, or stunned. Not nothing in my kit does that, so that's useless to me. And then beacon of guitar. <sighs> Where's that? Oh, I reduce all cooldown for twenty percent. That's not very useful to me. Maybe for serenity and for this, I guess, to get the charges back faster. Or I don't know. It's not incredibly useful for me. But that's fine. I can I can probably just keep these, and you never know. I could need them. I might need them for some other time. Uh, the one I have in right now gives me the, the passive called uh, Chant of Resonance, which is I just saw it right here. Spirit costs of mantra activation effects are reduced by 50%. You gain four spirit every second you have a mantra to learn. So that's actually really useful for this build, considering it's mostly about like spirit upkeep and regen and man all that stuff. So. It gives me a bit of a bonus, a bit more than I'd say either of these do. So I'm gonna put these away for now. And yeah, so that's that's the Hellfire Amulet slash ring process. And what kind of video would this be if I didn't include a montage? Because I kind of feel like I have to now. So we'll do that, and then we'll then we'll end the video. Yeah, go with the flow, feel the power in the circuit Man, handling this mic, I blow the fuse and overwork it I won't spit two-dimensional rhyme, straight static I'm a psychotropic rocket about to go spastic Taking out that trash like that cat Charles Dutton A lot of gum flapping, but y'all ain't saying nothing Okay, everyone, well, that's been the raiment of a thousand storms Generator Monk build set, whatever you want to call it I, don't, I, I can't be bothered to care at this point uh, thanks for joining me in, in this wonderful adventure, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.